It's a pleasure to be here. Today we're going to explore the various ways that blockchains and AI can come together. We're going to explore the various potentially fruitful collisions. One thing you may be asking, though, is where are these collisions first going to manifest themselves? Where is the intersection of blockchain and AI first going to happen? And I would contend that one possibility is in Oracle networks, and in particular, in the inclusion of LLMs in Oracle networks, in the potential incorporation of LLMs into Oracle networks, which may happen tonight. I think Lawrence is about to code one up. Now, why do I say this? Because the benefits are so obvious and immediate. For example, the use of an LLM in an Oracle network automatically expands the range of Oracle feeds available to us. It enables us to draw on the innumerable sources of natural language news and information on the internet. For example, one thing we can do is take news reports, written of course in natural language, and convert them into a form intelligible to a smart contract. More generally, we might ask ourselves, what is, the, what is the main strength of smart contracts? And I think many people would say it's the fact that they enable the use of code to specify execution conditions and payment conditions and to eliminate ambiguity. Well, what is their main weakness? I would say that their main weakness is the fact that they use code specification to eliminate ambiguity. Now, why do I say that this is a weakness? Ambiguity can actually, actually be quite helpful. It offers wiggle room. It enables people to deal with unanticipated consequences of the agreements that they have made together. Yeah. And LLMs help strike a balance between the need for precision and the desire for ambiguity. Okay. So in general, it sounds like AI plus oracles can lead to lots of good things. As I said, use of LLMs enables us to expand, for instance, the range of feeds we have, and I'm sure there are many other uses. But we should ask ourselves, with all of the worry about AI potentially going rogue, should, be, should we be worrying in this context? Right? Do we need to worry about unleashing this monster, this destructive monster called rogue AI? And I would say, yes, we do need to worry a little. We need to be careful. What I worry about is not so much rogue AI as rogue AI endowed with crypto. And by crypto here, I mean cryptocurrency or the ability to access a smart chain. Because access to crypto is a form of actuation for AI, and it will enable both the good and the bad. Let me give you a concrete example of the type of thing that I'm concerned about, right, which I'll refer to as a wallet-carrying Godzilla, obviously a metaphor for rogue AI endowed with crypto. Consider the following smart contract. This is a relatively benign example. I'll talk about examples of greater concern a little later. Now, consider the following contract. It contains 100 ETH in the form of a bounty to commit a crime. In this case, to steal a valuable diamond, famous diamond, the Koh-i-Noor, which is housed in the treasury in the Tower of London. It's part of the royal crown jewels, uh, has a storied history, a very contentious one, contentious political history, and is purportedly cursed as well. Somebody might be willing to pay, well, more than $100,000 just to make this thing disappear, just to have it stolen. The question, of course, is how is such a contract, a contract that offers a bounty of 100 ETH to steal this diamond, know that the diamond has been stolen, and know whom to give the bounty to, who should receive the 100 ETH reward for stealing the diamond. To answer this question, I need very briefly to acquaint you with a concept called a calling card. Calling card is an exotic detail left at the scene of a crime. 
whose intention is to identify the criminal, potentially pseudonymously, to the world. For example, if you've ever seen the classic Pink Panther movies from, I think, the 1960s, the Phantom is a jewel thief, played by David Niven there, who leaves at the scene of his crimes, at the scene where a jewel has been stolen, a glove monogrammed with a P, the P standing for Phantom, of course. So if you see this glove, if a jewel has disappeared and you see this glove, you know that the Phantom was responsible for perpetrating the crime. So here's how our rogue contract might work. The would-be jewel thief, before the crime has happened, provides the contract with a specification. It could be a natural language specification. It could be, for instance, the phrase P-glove. In, an, in a, essentially think of it as an encrypted form. It provides a commitment to the, a description of the calling card that is going to be left at the scene of the crime. In the case of the Phantom, it's the monogram P-glove. So this encrypted version or committed version of the calling card description has now been registered with the contract. Then the crime occurs. The diamond is stolen. Now the thief, okay, or rather the news reports on the crime, indicates that the diamond has been stolen and also mentions the surrounding circumstances, the fact that somebody happened to find a P-monogram glove at the scene of the crime. And now the perpetrator, the phantom, can go to the contract and decommit, essentially decrypt the calling card and reveal this phrase, P-glove. Now the contract checks two things. First, that according to the news report here, the diamond was stolen. And second, that the details of the crime match the calling card. Critically, and of course the reward is paid, in this case, to the phantom who has proven by showing knowledge, foreknowledge of the calling card, that he was responsible for the crime. And the important thing here is that an AI-powered oracle comes into play. In order to verify that the crime occurred and to check the match between the committed calling card and the reported details of the crime, we need something like an LLM. So this is where the oracle comes into play, and this is where AI is fueling a rogue smart contract. Okay. Well, I mentioned that's a relatively benign example. There are other examples of greater concern. For instance, bounties might be offered for things like cyber attacks, online harassment, arson, murder, all kinds of things. And so this is a source of real concern. This is something we need to think about. Happily, we have, I believe, ample time to think about it. Right? Even if Lawrence codes up his LLM-powered oracle today, I don't think people are going to be using LLM-powered oracles on a regular basis for some time. What should we do about this potential problem? First, we have to recognize that the confluence of AI and blockchains is an, an inevitability. So I'm not suggesting that we somehow prevent this convergence from occurring. But I think we need some type of fail-safe mechanism, a break glass mechanism. We need a way for a decentralized Oracle network to block access to an LLM if a rogue contract is identified as being in operation. There are a whole bunch of questions to ask here. I'm going to offer you more questions than answers. Now, what is the right policy for this break glass mechanism? Who should be able to propose use of this mechanism, for instance? How should invocation of the mechanism be voted upon? Who should do the voting? Should it be the nodes in the Oracle network? Should it be those who have staked on the network? Should it be the larger community? And finally, what happens if we have privacy-preserving oracles and smart contracts? How do we become aware even of the existence of such a rogue contract to know to shut it down? How do we monitor its activities? As I said, more questions at this point than answers, but important questions, I think. 
That's it for my talk. Thank you very much. Thank you.